Well, Father Simon joins us in studio to talk about his ministry as an Assumptionist priest. Uh, thanks so much for being with us, Father. Great, great to have you. I'm happy to be here. You know, I, I find this very special because Jonathan came with you, and he's an alumni of Assumption College in Worcester, Massachusetts, and my daughter goes to Assumption College oh, in Worcester, great. Massachusetts. So it's all about the Assumption yes, today. Yes, yes. Well, you're originally from um, the central part of Kenya, and we yes. talked about that you, yes. you, before the show, you and myself. Yeah. Uh, tell us what brought your call to the priesthood. What made you decide to become a priest? Well, I think this goes back to my early years when I was very young, six, seven years, when I used to pray, and more especially when I started catechism at the age of seven, and I started attending mass, and I admired priests saying mass, and I, I loved it, and, and I said, this is something that I would love to do. So my vocation started at very early years, and unfortunately, I went to a Protestant primary school and later on, I joined a Catholic high school, and I met um, with the Consolata Fathers, an Italian congregation. And I thought that I could become a religious priest. By then, I didn't know the difference between diocesan priest and uh, religious priest, but later on, it became, became clear. And I so much wanted to join the Consolata Fathers, but then my pastor back at home didn't support the idea. So I de ended up joining the diocese, but later on I changed at some point when I was in theology. Wow. Uh, yes. So what an interesting uh, path. Yes. I have to I have to go back to to a point you just made because I think a lot of people get a little confused sometimes the difference, yes. particularly with priests, the difference between a, a diocesan yes. parish priest yes. and a, a priest who belongs to a, a religious order or a congregation. Yes. Could you just explain to us about the assumptionists and what makes the assumptionists special? Well, the assumption is um, we, we live in apostolic communities. We are um, uh, a small order, I would say. It started 1850 in France. The founder is a man called Emmanuel Darzan of Happy Memories. And in the United States, it, came, uh, it started around 1895 or something like that. And they are the founders of Assumption College. And the uh, interesting thing is about we live in communities. We live together, sharing everything together, mm -hmm. uh, living a common life, praying together, and sharing meals. And uh, our apostolate should be communitarian. So that togetherness, living as, uh, as a community, is an interesting thing in the, in the assumption. And uh, also our charism being uh, socio, doctrinal, and ecumenical. Uh, all our apostles has to take that dimension. So living in community and yeah. a particular charism. Yes, yeah. yes. Interesting. Yes, yes. And you, you've worn so many hats. Uh, you've been a vocations director, yes. a, a treasurer, yes. uh, um, a pastor. Yes. Okay, so out of all of these, yeah. okay, I'm going to put you on this party. Yes. What was your favorite? I would say my favorite would be uh, working in a parish as a pastor. Really? I did that in a very big parish in Tanzania uh, where um, I really enjoyed my work to reorganize the parish which had uh, some bit of problems but later on it became a wonderful parish and I always admired my work there. It was not easy, it was tiresome. By evening I was feeling so exhausted but I, w I felt fulfilled because of what I did. Mm -hmm. I, I worked as a vocation director for many years. Actually I was doing many things at the same time. When I was the vocational director, I was still the treasurer in my community. I was still the, uh, the secretary of the board of trustees of our congregation in East Africa. Then later on, I combined the work of being pastor, uh, being the regional superior, being a member of the provincial council and so forth, and it was not easy. Mm -hmm. But uh, the most favorite was being pastor in hmm. a parish. Now, I know there are, there are different mm -hmm. traditions that come to the church. What, what's the difference between a mass that you would say in, in Kenya or Tanzania and a mass that you would say in, in New England? <laughs> the greatest difference is that the timing. Oh. Here, here masses are relatively short. <laughs> in our place, we, we take time. We I have, love that you just <laughs> started laughing before you even started oh, yeah. the answer. Yeah. Yeah, there, you know, you can't give a short homily. If I give a short homily in Africa, in Kenya, in Tanzania, wherever, they will think I don't know what I'm doing. They feel <laughs> cheated. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they say, what's wrong with this priest? Didn't he go to the seminary? 
<laughs> what's happening with him? But here, if I give a long homily, people will think I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a question of... It's the exact of, opposite. Yeah, yeah it's the funny. exact opposite. So there, the homily will have to be at least the minimum, at least 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But most of the times it's that minutes. Some go up to an hour. My an gosh. An hour? Yes, yes. Most of the times. And if you have celebrations like ordinations, you would be surprised to have a mass taking as long as six hours. Six hours? I have attended a few. It's right? a little different here. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit different. <laughs> you, you know, another thing, I, I'm sorry, Bishop, but another thing I always see is if yeah. you go to a Spanish mass, yeah. and we've talked about this, Bishop, yeah. the music is different. It's just, it's, yes. a, it's a different, it's the same thing between in, in, over in Kenya oh, and yeah, Africa? Oh, yeah, so, it's so lively, a lot of dancing. And what makes our mass long, we have a lot of processions. We have the entrance procession, then we have the gospel procession, then uh, the offertory procession, and after communion, we uh, have something interesting called Thanksgiving dance. So uh, the, all that we include in the mass, and it makes it long. But people are happy, and they are, they are excited to be in the mass. If you made it too short, they, they wouldn't feel very happy. <laughs> yeah, no, around here, um, yeah. you become legendary mm -hmm. if you give a short homily and have a short mass. You know, yeah. you, you go down in, in the history books of a parish. Yeah. You know? yeah. They remember you for, for decades. <laughs> decades. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're over at St. Columkill's in Brighton, yes. Massachusetts. Is Father Richard Fitzgerald taking good care of you? That's what I want to know. Yes, he is. He's of course good, he is. He's a great pastor. Yes. He's a great, he yes. watches this show, yeah. too. Yeah. No yeah. doubt he's probably watching right now. Oh, yeah, I believe. <laughs> Father Simon, where can people learn more about the Assumptionists, about the province, and the great work of your community? Well, here in the United States, uh, the best place would be the Assumption College, because our charism is basically education. That's where... Uh, we, we, we can easily educate people about Christ, get people in touch with their faith. So anybody who wants to know more about the Assumption can go to the college. We run a parish in, in uh, Starbridge called St. Anne St. Patrick, and there you can get in touch with the Assumptionists. And where I am in Brighton, we have uh, the provincial house there, and we, we, we live with students who study in different colleges. And if you came there and we have a formation house, you can get in touch with assumptionists and you get to learn more about what we do and how we live as assumptionists. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, Father. It's, it's clear that you love what you're doing and you're a very, very busy priest, and that's a great thing. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. Keeps you out of trouble, though, when you have many jobs. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs>